All right, what's good? What's good? It's up on a Sunday morning, and I uh, wanted to do a book review. You know, coming up on the best time of the year to me, the, the fall, start of college football, NFL. And I thought this would just be the perfect time to bring out this book review. And the title of this book is $40 Million Slaves by William C. Roden. And I really don't remember what brought me to this book, but just the title itself is just so, you know, if you, it's so ironic, so mind jarring, just the title, $40 million slaves. And the first time I was reading through the book, I think I was maybe, I think I was in high school at the time. And... He started to dive in to what that really means. And, you know, you're always thinking, like, how can someone that's a millionaire or doing something that they love for a living, how, how are they a slave? And it's never really about money when it comes to slavery because it's, if you go through history, you'll see that there were slaves that were paid for their skill. You know, if they were like a locksmith or a carpenter. They were allowed to go into town and make money, you know, and some slaves even that's how they bought their freedom through their skill and the money they saved up to buy themselves out of bondage. But some that made their money, you know, knew they could, but just, you know, didn't have any interest in doing so. So always remember that it's never about money when it comes to slavery. It's always about who calls the shots? Who has the power? When you have power over someone to determine, you know, the end result of something major in their life, you you know, controlling their lives. That's what slavery, what makes a slave a slave, the power. And when you look at the sporting industry today, the majority of the product, you know, the, the, the entertainment that, that we love and, and enjoy are through black people that have no power in, in the leagues now it has been some players that have a little bit more than players of the past but in the grand scheme of things you know you don't have any say so of you know the scheduling uh, where you know um, the team is located uh, where you play you know you can get traded at the drop of a dime Teams have the power to say no if to something that you want to do off the field that they deem might be dangerous to your health or your body. You know what I'm saying? Like they own you. And I know if you really thinking, you know, on the, on the, on the first level and not thinking, you know, a little deeper, you might not think that is slavery. And just the, and the most recent example that of a player that pushed back a little bit was Kyrie. He didn't want to take something that he felt like his body didn't need. And he couldn't play because of that. And I, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he couldn't. And even though that was detrimental to his career... He proved that we have the power to make changes. Y'all just can't be y'all just y'all can't be scared to, to 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 flex that power. And he did that. It took longer. Yeah, he lost money, and yeah, he might have tarnished his reputation. But he knows that. Look, you want me here because of my talent. At the, at the end of the day, I'm the one of the reasons that. This place is packed out. So if I deem something is, you know, not safe for me or something I just don't feel like I need for my body, for my well-being, then fuck y'all. And that's what he did. And a lot of people got on him for that. But I saw, you know, through all, all, the, all the noise and the media talk and because and I know what he's on. 
I know exactly what he's on. And there was a time that we did have power. And that was before all the major sports leagues got integrated. Because before then, we had our own leagues. Stadiums were in on the black side of town. And we got the tax money for the games. You know what I'm saying? Back in HBCU days. And he even talked about that in the book. Because he played college football when it was... Um, it was that big game between Grambling and uh, I want to say Morehouse. I, I'm not. Let me. It was Grambling, but it was a big football game. And they had to host it in New York City. Let me find that real quick. It was Grambling and Morgan State. And they sold out Yankee Stadium. And this was in the. Let's see what year was that. That was in year. What year was it? That had to be during the, in, yeah, late 60s. Late 60s. September 28, 1968. And they sold out two HBCUs, sold out Yankee Stadium for a football game. Come on. Like, we, we have the economic power. It's just, we're giving it away. We're giving it away. And I know that, at least in today, and like now, in today's time, that it's, you know, it feels like a chore to try to ask a kid, yeah, don't take this full ride from Alabama or Auburn, but go to Tuskegee, where you, you see it's not as much money, not as much opportunity, but if it starts incrementally, incrementally, and I think I said that right, <laughs> and a wave of players start doing it, we can make the economic shift in football in basketball and whatever and in even other sports as you read this book you'll see that we dominated um horse racing bicycling anything you can think of even now with you know serena tennis tiger and golf like imagine if they're like all right i'm not playing for the pj tour i'm gonna make my own tournament for for black golfers. You think ESPN is not going to go wherever Tiger wants? You know, you know, saying wherever he he wants to go and play, they're going to go. And even going back to the Kyrie point of him wanting to flex his power, he even said in you know the 2020 bubble we shouldn't play. We have like bigger things to handle, and we should be in our own league. And folks called him crazy, and he's right. If 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 Brian KD. Kyrie, Curry, they're like, yeah, we're not going to play this season. We're, we're going to put our money together, build a stadium. And they, they get, you know, majority of the NBA players to come. Y'all still playing y'all teams. We're going to still run the same structure. But now we own it. Think ESPN is not going to go? Think Fox Sports not going to go? And put the cameras. And then once you get the cameras in, endorsements, and that money is going to just switch to the to where the market is. It's, it's, I know it sounds simple, but a lot easier said than done, of course, but the money's going to go wherever the product is. And we even look back in the Negro Leagues, it was a portion of the book that was talking about how the comparisons of the entertainment value of the Negro Leagues and the major leagues, like, it was a lot more showboating, you know, base stealing, you know, like like diving catches, a um, lot more, you know, bat flipping. The things that, you know, fans like today, a lot more energy, a lot more flashiness in the game. You even saw with Dr. J and Kareem, um, they had to make, they made a rule for Kareem that he, can, he can't dunk, you know what I'm saying? Because it was unfair. But... It was obvious that it was way more entertaining to see, you know, the high flyers, the entertaining guys. So imagine if Dr. J was like, nah, I'm going to stay and we're going to make a, a, a black league, a Kareem. We're going to make a black league. You know, where are the fans going to go? They even said it. White people even know that it's, it's more entertaining to see that type of style of play, fast paced, flashy, in, in, in any sport. You know, uh, that was same with HBCU football that when he played um, 
because Alabama was really one of the last, or in the South in general, was like the last region to accept black players. But USC and Alabama had a game where USC had more black players, and they beat Alabama. And Alabama, and that's when they knew, like, all right, we we got to get, we got to start getting guys from these black high schools, these black areas, to, in order to compete. You know, we got to try to, you know, um, in, in the recruiting, you got to try to start to, you know, steal guys away from HBCUs. And and that's exactly what happened. That's the only way you're going to, they knew that was the only way we were going to be able to compete and survive in the sports industry is to get the, the best talent. But if that talent kept that power within their community and didn't let nothing out, we wouldn't see, you know, 40 million dollar slaves feel me so that's that's just it's 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 it no it's it's just but once you get this book go through i don't want to give away too much of the stories and and uh when he breaks down the detail of 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 how players today are slaves and at one point in time we did have that power and we lost it and how we can get it back he he goes through all of it here. He goes through all of it here, uh, even at the you know kind of like the like the subtitle of the book, the rise, fall, and redemption of the black athlete. And that's just it's it's it's, it's an amazing book, great book, really eye opener. This is my second time reading it. Um, it, it's just I I could this is a book that every everybody should read. More specifically, black males should read, right? But uh, it's it's amazing, man. It's just like we have the power. We have the power. We just are giving it away. We have. We're just giving it away. And like I do at the end of every book review, I go in and just read the summary in the back just to close it off. So go ahead and do that. From Jackie Robinson, Muhammad Ali, and off the ash, African American athletes have been the center of modern culture. They only feel heroics, admired, and their stratospheric earnings envied. But for all their money, fame, achievement, says New York Times columnist William C. Roden, black athletes still find themselves on the periphery of true power in the multi-billion dollar industry their talent built. Provocative and controversial. Roden's $40 million slave weaves a compelling narrative of black athletes in the United States. From the plantation to the beginnings in the 19th century boxing rings, to the his, to the history-making accomplishments of notable figures, such as such as Jesse Owens, Althea Gibson, and Willie Mays, Roden reveals that black athletes' evolution has merely been a journey from literal plantations, where sports were introduced as diversions to quell revolutionary steerings. So today's figurative ones in the form of collegiate and professional sports programs, he details the conveyor belt that brings kids from inner cities and small towns to big time programs where they're cut off from their roots and exploited by team owners, sports agents, and the media. He also sets his sights on athletes like Michael Jordan, who he says have abdicated their responsibility, their responsibility to the community with an apathy that borders on treason. The power black athletes have today is as limited as when masters force their slave is at, is as limited as when masters force their slaves to race and fight. The primary difference is today's shackles are often the athletes' own making. There you go, folks. Forty million dollar slaves by William C. Roden.